Hello, I'm Amanda Ann Gregory, trauma psychotherapist and trainer, and I wanted to share one of my favorite attachment interventions, creating the plaster masks. Now, you're probably looking at this and thinking, oh my gosh, this is a lot of work and a lot of mess. Okay, it is messy, uh, but there's a way to do it in your office and your homes uh, that is very, very doable. The materials are pretty simple, but you do need to order some gauze bandages. I found them online for about $16 for six rolls. Uh, you need petroleum jelly, scissors, water, and that's it. Now, the instructions can be a little bit chaotic, but trust me, it's worth it. Here's basically what you do. One of your clients is going to be putting the mask on another one of your clients. So this is something that you can do with families. This is something that you can do with couples, as long as you have two clients. And the goals of this exercise is to build attachment. And this is gonna create some safety. This is gonna be a chance for the therapist to do some modeling. This is something you can do to work on trust and communication. So there's a lot of goals that you can address with this one activity. This usually will take an entire session to create one masks. Sometimes you could do one mask, sometimes you can do two sessions and have them switch roles. It's just depending upon what the dynamic needs. So with the instructions, basically you have one of your clients lay on the floor, usually like on a trash bag or something to protect your carpet or your floor, and you have the other client apply the mask. They start with a thin layer of petroleum jelly all over the face, particularly any hairs on the face. They cut the plastic bandages into strips. Now, usually I'm helping my clients do that. So I'm not sitting in a chair watching them doing this. I'm actually on the ground doing it with them. You dip these bandages in water and then you remove the excess water. So it's kind of like a this motion. You dip them in and with my fingers, I just remove the water and then you will place the wet bandages on their face. And you do that in a way where you're slowly covering up the entire face. So if you see this boy here, he's starting with the mouth and he's kind of going over the cheek. We're gonna put multiple layers on. And what I tell my clients is do, don't do the eyes at all um, unless that is actually agreed upon. And then we will cover the eyes depending upon the comfort level. We never cover up the nostrils or as the kids say, the nose holes, we do cover up the mouth because this is a trust activity. Um, so you overlap the bandages and you avoid the hairline, the ears, the nostrils. You allow the mask to dry a little bit on the face. And what I like to do is fan it a bit. That can make it go a bit faster. The mask will not be completely dry. It just has to be dry enough that when you pull it up, it, when you pull it off the face, it doesn't lose its shape. And it's pretty easy to pull it off. All you do is on one hand, on either side of the face and gently pull it off. It's very easy to do. Um, this is plaster, but it's not gonna get stuck to the face because you're using the petroleum jelly and your client's not gonna be laying there for four hours or overnight letting it dry, so you're okay. And here, here are the instructions that I give my clients. The one who is supplying the mask, the one who's actually doing it. So in this case, it would be this teenage boy. He needs to constantly communicate, and in this case, it's his mother. He's letting her know constantly what he's doing. He's saying things like, okay, I'm going to put another layer over your mouth now. Okay, I'm going to be doing this now. He's going to provide a lot of reassurance to her. You're okay. I'm right here. They're going to develop a checking in process where he can ask her if she's doing okay, and she can give him some sort of nonverbal sign, like a thumbs up, to let him know she's okay. He is in charge of taking care of her, being very gentle, reassuring her. Her responsibility is to be receptive, to allow to herself to feel safe, to trust her son. And so you can kind of think of the dynamics of some of your clients. You're gonna have some of them that you really want to receive the mask. They need to experience that safety, that trust. You have some that need to provide the mask. Maybe they need to work on their communication their reassurance, their ability to be gentle. I've done this with siblings where one sibling struggled to be gentle with a younger sibling. So we created this mask together and this was a great way for them to learn that and to learn about those dynamics of being gentle and caring. 
So with this mask, what you do is you let it dry overnight. I usually leave it in my office. Uh, the next appointment that the family has will come in and we'll look at the mask. We may discuss the experience then or directly after the experience, depending upon the time. And there's actually a lot of things we can do with this mask then. We can paint it, which is a whole nother activity. Um, or I usually like the family to take it home with them and put it in a place where they're home, where it's remembered. If you're working with a couple, it would be in one of their homes or the home that they share as a symbol of something that they did together and their work together. So this is one of many experiential um, interventions that I have. If you're interested in any more, let me know. And of course, if you're interested in me providing a training, don't hesitate to reach out.